Welcome back to Collider Jedi Council. It's our Star Wars show where we talk about everything, you guessed it, Star Wars. A lot of things happening this week. We still got this Han Solo drama going on. A lot in the world of canon. There's so much to talk about today, and I got a great council to do it. The Grand Moff Nemiroff herself, Perry Nemiroff is here. Hi, guys. Always happy to be back on the show. Thank you for having me. And... Go Han Solo. I'm going to keep rooting for it, no matter how many times we talk about negative things with this movie. Well, it's going to be hard not to, but we're going to try to spin the positive, but we're also going to talk about all the things that happened. And someone that is joining us again, it was great to have her the first time, even better to have her back again. It's Ash Crossan is here. Hello, Ash. Hey, she's back. Thanks for having me back. Of course. Thanks for joining us. And Mr. Mark Yodi Riley, one week, just one week before he defends his championship at the Collider Collision. How you doing, buddy? May the force be with us, everyone. I'm excited. That's going to be a fun match. How the hell are you today, Christian? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. Good. You're going to be doing the uh, the stories here. We're going to get right I into the, the movie news, uh, Star Wars movie news, stuff that's happening in the world of the film. And, and pff, man, just last week alone, the, what we talked about with Han Solo, we had a really good discussion about this thing. It's changed dramatically. Like, for what we, everything we talked about last week, it's changed dramatically. Tell us what, what's going on. Yeah, that's right, Christian. Uh, THR came out with another article, this in-depth article about yet more problems happening behind the scenes. Let's start with the first thing that they touched upon, which is firing an editor. When they moved from the Canary Islands to London, they did get rid of one of their editors, Chris Dickens, who did Macbeth, and they replaced him with Pietro Scalia a veteran of the Ridley Scott films, including Alien Covenant and The Martian. Who knows why? That's one of the things that broke, as well as an interesting little bit of info, an acting coach being hired on for Alden Ehrenreich. Uh, kind of goes into some some of the, the, the scuttlebutt that we're hearing behind the scenes that Lucasfilm wasn't happy with the performance. Maybe that's why they brought in an acting coach. But there's a lot going on here. Ron Howard, of course, stepped in, and uh, one of the things that they were saying is that when it was announced that Ron Howard was brought on, the entire production broke into applause. However, here on StarWarsNewsNet.com, they're saying they've heard insiders that were just applauding for changing direction, going in, you know, trying to save the production, not because Lord and Miller were fired or replaced or left over creative differences, but just an all hands on deck clapping. We're going to get through this, Christian. This is a huge report. It's still going. What do you think of all this? There's so much because it was funny when Ellis was on last week. He jokes he's like, "It's not like they're going to make it like Ace Ventura." And then there's reports. Star Wars Newsnet again had a report. There's someone that said, "Look, they had looked at footage initially for this thing, and they had said they liked everything that they were seeing when they first saw it. Then they saw a cut that was put together, mm -hmm. and then is that's when the red flags kind of went up, and they went, "Wait." This, there's, there's, a, there's this tone that just doesn't seem to be what the essence of Han Solo is all about. And some people actually compared some of the things that's not the slapsticky nature to an Ace Ventura type film. That's one report. That's absolutely not confirmed, but it, it's a report. The other report is that he, the, Alden Ehrenreich was the guy who approached Kathleen Kennedy and Kasdan. He had the first concerns about the directors, and he was the one who was had at first this particular way he was going to approach it, and he had to approach it a completely different way. And now there's reports of these acting coaches where maybe the acting coach being brought onto a film, first of all, is not rare. It happens mm -hmm. all the time. What is rare, just like everything in this story, is the fact that it was brought on like three weeks before we're wrapped shooting. But again, if you believe the reports that are true, that the tone on what... Lord Miller were asking for in this slapsticky type of way, and he is preparing for this type of role one way. Then he's throwing a curveball and go, no, approach it that way. And then they come back to you and go, no, now we need to do that way. Of course you're going to need a coach to help you with that. He's, he's, he's a good actor. He's still a younger actor. He's been doing this for a bit, but, I mean, he hasn't broke out, and this is the biggest role of his life. Mm -hmm. Just bringing on an acting coach, that doesn't mean people see that and go, oh, that means he's terrible. That means he's terrible. That means you should have cast, uh, you know, the the kid from Kingsman, or you should have cast the kid from Baby Driver. That that's what that means. That doesn't mean that at all. It means that this thing is an absolute mess. And what they had to do was say, you were told to do that. Now we need you to do this. And if you need help, we're gonna pay for this help so you can get through this because we all are on the same page. I don't know. It's 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 sloppy as far as the round of applause thing goes. I think that's exactly what it is. Then when they found if if you're on this crew and all these problems are happening, and you hear that Lord Miller had certain ways, and maybe you maybe you were on board with their vision, 
and uh, as a crew member, and then you hear that they are having problems with the with the powers that be, and then they're gone. You as a crew member, well, what the hell's going on? What's happening? And then they tell you, a capable director and someone who's well respected, like Ron Howard, is coming. Whether or not you th- the, the crew's not worried about whether or not they think he's the best one to bring the life of Han Solo. They're, they're thinking about who's going to finish this project, who's going to make this movie work. So if I'm on that crew and Ron Howard is announced, I'm applauding also. It's not a matter of like, yeah, those guys are gone. It's a matter of like, okay, our jobs are our jobs are intact here and let's work. So don't always read into the first thing, whether it's the acting coach, it's the, the applause. I think there's a lot that we can take out of this, but actually there's so much in this story that is it's crazy. What, yeah. what, what are you even thinking? I mean, I'm pretty much going to echo what you said because I 100% verbatim agree with that. I think that they were probably telling Alden to go one direction and then... They're saying, no, you need to hone it in, be a little more serious, not Ace Ventura. Like, I don't know if I believe that report, but Alden Ehrenreich doesn't need an acting coach to be better. I mean, if you've seen him in every mo- any movie, he's the best part of it. If you saw him on stage in, um, at Star Wars Celebration London, I'm watching him, I'm watching his mannerisms, mannerisms and I'm going, that's Han. That yeah. guy is Han. So I don't think he needs an acting coach because he sucks. I think he just needs it to kind of shift directions. Right. And agree with you about the applause thing. I think somebody came on, announced it, and they're like, Thank God this isn't going away. We still have a job. It's going to be okay. It's Ron Howard. Perry? Just think about how applause like that tends to start. For all we know, it was a whole room full of people, and one person was just like that awkward. (laughs) So then everybody else, and all of a sudden, you have a round of applause, and you get reports like this. It is really weird coming off of last week's uh, Jedi Council and then doing this when the landscape has kind of changed pretty drastically. And just because I think it's important to keep reiterating this, you know, it is well worth discussing all of these reports, but at the same time, we don't know how accurate any of these sources are. We need to take what information we get and we need to assess it as best we can, and that's what we're doing on this show, but, you know, just don't get too crazy about, like, that is exactly how it went down because I'm victim of that because last week, you know, it's impossible to assess a situation like this without going, oh, like, Lorda Miller versus Kathleen Kennedy. Right. And at the time, my mind was more in line with Lorda Miller because, I mean, really, it seemed crazy to me that in development, hiring, pre-production, the beginning of production, how did they not see these problems? Maybe they were restrained too much. However, the more I read about it, the more I'm starting to shift sides. And and I think what really like was the clincher in that is it was the Hollywood Reporter report, which it almost reads like the way I want a tell-all book to read about this production one day and about Fantastic Four one day, because it starts with it starts with this paragraph about how they they didn't start shooting one day until one o'clock and it says how they only shot three setups when they were supposed to shoot like i think it was something like 15. Mm -hmm. as someone who has produced i mean i've only produced one feature film so i don't want to make it seem like i'm anything like i know all my shit with this stuff but But as someone who produced one feature if i heard that we started x amount of hours late i don't know what their start time was and i only and my director only shot three versus 15 setups if I were Kathleen Kennedy, I would react to something like that because that could drastically yeah. affect how they change the production. Well, there's a lot of that because for what they, the thing is what people don't realize, when you have directors that 21 Jump Street and 22 Jump Street, yes, they had big budgets, but they're not on the scale of Han Solo. They're not. Mm-hmm. And they might have bitten off more they could chew. It's certainly possible. But I think that from the one thing we were talking about this last week was, well, how are they going to use any of the footage if it's this this tone if they didn't stick to the script some of the reports what they're saying is that they actually they they would give Kazdin some of those takes they would they would go to get some of the the script and actually deliver it so maybe there is usable stuff from the performances maybe there isn't but maybe there is and i think that then well, the biggest problem was then they started doing all this improv then they started to really go off case and then they had this different vision of what they thought the character was and then you know the other report of it is what we kind of speculated on and that's exactly that where gareth edwards in rogue one was a said we'll bring in tony gilroy to do this and he said okay what do we got to do let's work together let's get it done and the reports are saying that lord miller were like no we'll do the reshoots but we're going to shoot them we're going to do our movie or we're going to go. And they were like, okay, we tried to make it work. And Kathleen Kennedy was very aware that everybody was going to be talking about this. It was going to be a PR nightmare. But you got to do what's right for the movie. And that might be it. I mean, it's funny, though, because I'm, 
uh, Jeremy Johns mentioned this today on Movie Talk, and I don't disagree with him. I'm at a point right now with this movie that I know it's a lot of money. I get it is, but if they pulled the plug on this thing right now and said we're not going to make this movie, I, it won't happen. That's that's not going to happen. It just, there's no way with the amount of money that they've already spent on it, the amount of money that they're going to make on it, regardless of what it is. But it would be okay if they decided to not make this movie at all. Oh boy, that I mean, well, I guess we'll get into it a little more later with a specific Twitter question, but. In terms of them replacing Lord and Miller versus how it went down with Gareth Edwards is some of the things that I found most alarming in this Hollywood Reporter piece were talking about how Lord and Miller, it, not even just the improv though and, and not sticking to Kasdan's script, it was more about them not being leaders and not mm, being right. decisive because that's something that's easy to forget. A director can have brilliant creative vision, but that is also the captain of that ship. And if you aren't able to quickly be able to say like, we need this now for this reason, That's that right then and there is why a whole production can fall apart. And it's also probably why when an editor puts stuff together to present to Kathleen Kennedy and Lawrence Kasdan, it probably couldn't come together the way that they wanted. Well, Riley, so the other thing we're not really talking about too much is that this editor gets replaced too. Is that, I mean, is, the, do, do the, is that even mentioned if all this other drama isn't happening, like an editor being replaced, do you think? Uh, I mean... Not, Not that no, editors aren't important, obviously. Yeah, what I, I mean is that it's just no, editors get replaced. Well, the, the thing with all of this happening right now is you can start to put together the dots and you can start to fill in the blanks and create a story of what might have happened. I look at the editor thing is something that is, these reports are coming after the fact. So maybe this happened while the shift was going on. Maybe this happened, they reached out to Ron Howard. They didn't like the dailies they were getting. They decided it's time to replace, let's start here. Let's get a new editor. Let's get something fresh. Because we hear of dailies coming in, Kathleen Kennedy not happy. Lawrence Kasdan having to fly out in London to kind of shadow direct, which Lord and Miller reportedly didn't want. So they replace the editor. I find that somewhat more on the normal side uh, as trying to fix something while production's happening. The, the red flags don't go off with, with me with that one that much. It still sucks. It still sucks. But... I have to comment. I hope, Christian, mm -hmm. that they do not cancel a Han Solo movie. And I know you said they never yeah. will. They're not going but to. But there there's a history did. in Hollywood. There is legendary Hollywood productions that have had so much problem, so many problems. And then the movie comes out, and you're like, wow, I think of Jaws. All the movies out there, Jaws had the worst production luck in the world. And a it classic a, came out, right? Jaws had a different... Jaws different. Had, Jaws had no, a very I know. The shark didn't work. Well, and the, it also wasn't a character that people knew before, and it didn't have all this... And it wasn't in the age but, of, of the uh, internet where everybody's reporting on everything that you're it's doing. It's just an example. There's, no, no, no. Uh, there's millions more. World War Z is one, for sure. sure. I mean, there, there, there's a better World example. One yes. was one. I mean, I So get I want to see it just because I want to see... I, but like, what if we get the best movie, the one of the best Star Wars movies we've ever seen, and this becomes legendary we get the tell-all books we get the coffee table books we get the oh my god we get the film knowledge we get all the questions in the schmo down <laughs> from this and that's exciting to me but as far as i also want to comment on the acting coach and for everybody out there i hate it when this happens but these articles that come out that say that that say all that aaron reich might be replaced because of his, of his acting with x y and z that's horse you know what right. that is so much BS. Do not believe that because I've seen these reports now. I've seen these links on Facebook where I'm like, you people are actually buying this? Mm -hmm. Some website decides to post a fake article and say he's going to get replaced with our friend Anthony and Gruber because, he, that. because yeah. he does a great and fantastic Harrison Ford impression. Sure, I would have loved if he got the part because he's a great guy, but don't believe that for a second, people. It's, it's, it's messy reporting. Right. It's BS. Well, if they got rid of him now, well, that's not going to happen. If they got rid of him they now. Did, then they didn't they even have to, have to reshoot, have to reshoot the, the entire movie. movie. Yeah. Click on the. If you click on that link, you're not using your head. Like you got to think about Back it. Back to the Future. Yeah, you got to think about it. You, they're going to have to reshoot the entire movie right. if they decide to get rid of Alden. So if they have an acting coach, it goes to the original point. It's just they want to help this guy through. This is the biggest production this guy's ever done. There's a lot of money behind it. People want it to be good. Why not give the kid a little bit of help? All right. You got something else? Ah. 
I could throw something interesting in if, uh, we, if sure. we've got time for <laughs> it. Um, another thing, actually, you kind of just kind of paved the way to it. Mm. It's like, even though we're citing, you know, the editor and the acting coach as all these red flags, it is also them trying to work with Lord and Miller to fix it. Because one of the, yeah. one of the things that kind of got the wheels in my head turning when I was reading that article was a point where they said, it's like a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation where right now we're all like, oh my God, look at all this stuff they're doing with three weeks left to go. But then again, we might be having a completely different conversation conversation of right at the beginning then Lord and Miller got the boot and it's like well why didn't Kathleen Kennedy try to work with them and I tend to think that that still would have been the better choice but I still think we would have been having this conversation no matter what they decided yeah all right what's next all right let's uh cleanse the palate a bit hmm. and <laughs> go into the last Jedi because it's very cool a few brief behind the scenes were shots and uh were shot and there's the British Film Institute they have established a program in which they hire BFI Film Academy trainees for their movies. And so in this little video that was uh, tweeted out by at BFI, it's very cool. You can see some shots of Ray on the beach running. You can see some shots from the Han Solo set. Oh my God, see, it still, it still exists. It's not on fire. It's not on fire, it's there. And then Captain Phasma. So these are some cool little behind the scenes shots that, that I always dig to watch. My favorite being the Captain Phasma shot with the green screen in the back and all the First Order troopers. Christian, what do you think? Yeah, they're cool. I mean, I just all it does really just get me amped up that we're not too right around the corner from this movie coming yeah. out. That's that's what you start to realize. And because we're talking about the stuff that's going wrong with Han Solo, so far what we've seen is that a lot of things have gone right with the Last Jedi. Now that could change if we see the movie. Hopefully not. Um, but right now it seems like everything has been working well the imagery is, has been great it, it we're a little spoiled because when we were at star wars celebration we saw so many of these cool shots from behind the scenes that really worked but what i do like is that you see that shot almost like that rocky shot of uh ray running down the beach as she's got the lightsaber and <laughs> the dude in the in the car it takes a little bit out of the, you know, the, 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 the the mystique of it all but i think that when you when you look at these pictures you look at the emphasis on on phasma you start to get excited i mean there's it's different than i think it was vanity fair that came out with those ones for force awakens when you started to await oh, she's standing in front of this rubble so maybe that means this and you could take elements of the story i think these look oh, like that picture of phasma looks very similar to the force awakens like yeah, if you would have told That's me what i thought it was right yeah. if you would have told me that was the opening uh, scene in the force awakens i would have believed you but uh what do you think of the, about these images these are i mean they're cool images there's nothing really crazy oh my god about them i was a little more taken by the video period just because it seems like We've been talking about Han Solo for so long and it's such a, a bummer. And then all of a sudden you see this like really inspiring piece and maybe it's just because I went to film school and I like behind the scenes stuff. But seeing a piece like this where it's like one kid in that video said like, I'm 19 and I'm learning from the best and I'm working on a Star Wars movie. I don't know, I just feel like I needed that video right now for not for these behind the scenes photos, but for, for the rah-rah Star Wars and like rah-rah filmmaking sure. feel. So. I don't know. This this video just made me happy even more so than seeing more behind the scenes from Last Jedi. Yeah. I mean, clearly carefully selected images by Lucasfilm. Right. Don't give much away. Ray's still training. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it did get me excited. I feel like we're kind of starting to like forget about Last Jedi coming out very soon because we're talking so much about Han Solo. So I'm ready to get amped. Yeah. <laughs> Riley, so let's get away from the images for a second. I know sure. you probably feel the same way. Yeah. But we're, we were very close to D23. I mean, oh, yeah. we're around the corner here from mm. D23. Yeah. When I say that, it's like, when I say Last Jedi, Last Jedi's got a couple months, uh, you know, a few months. This, this is like a week and a half, two weeks away. Mm. Um, what's happening? What are we going to do? Are we gonna, you think the emphasis is going to be on Last Jedi? Uh, yeah, it's going to be on Last Jedi. Yeah. I think we're going to get a trailer. I think we're going to get a trailer, and it's going to be Luke's film going, here's the trailer, everybody. Talk about this. Let's talk about this. Yeah. I think they're going to make a big splash because let's, Let's look at it PR-wise. They do want to kind of get the fans focused on what's next. And also, you kind of said it, we haven't heard we, we haven't heard peep from Ryan Johnson or any problems whatsoever. We haven't even heard reshoots, which I know there's going to be some reshoots. There inevitably is in these big productions. But Ryan Johnson, he even came out on Twitter and said, I've had the most creative freedom like I've had on all my movies. So he obviously is having a good time making The Last Jedi. I think they're going to focus on that. I mean, maybe they'll address it in a way that's like, hey, we brought in Ron Howard for young Han Solo. Right. Don't worry about it, guys. Everything's cool. I, y y you never know. But mm -hmm. I think it's going to be definitely just a lot of Last Jedi stuff, and I couldn't be more excited. All right, we'll see. What's next? 
Well, back to Han Solo. Why uh -oh. not, right? Uh -oh. Because that's what uh. we do here on Jedi Council. But this time it's Bob Iger, head of Disney. Bob Iger, just trying to wash his car, just trying to do, you know, human things, you know. Celebrities, executives, they're just like us. And he was going to get his car wash, and TMZ caught up with him and asked about Ron Howard coming on. And, of course, he had nothing but nice things to say. He was asked, uh, you know, is the production doomed? Is it going to be okay? And he said, of course, Ron Howard's in charge. But he said, why is it going to be good? Why is this production not doomed? Bob, Bob Iyer took a moment. He kind of did one of these things and was like, all right. First of all, we have a great cast, a great script, and a great director. It's going to be fine. I'm very excited. Now, Christian, this sounds like a PR spin to me. It's Bob Iger, the head of Disney. He's not going to go out and say, yeah, we're screwed, man. Uh, right. I don't know what we're going to do, but uh, yeah, you heard it here first. No, he's going to be the leader, the fearless leader that he is. Uh, of course he is. I, I yeah. would love to see Bob Iger turn and go, what a mess. <laughs> <laughs> wouldn't that be great? But, but yeah, then he wouldn't have his job, but he's he, he's he's... He's a, he's a very powerful dude and a very smart dude, and he's in charge for a reason because he's going to be cool, calm, and collected, and he's going to say, we got it handled. It's, it's going to work out. My, the thing that when, when he's been asked about this stuff that, is, that stood out to me, and this is before the problems, I didn't think that Han Solo was going to move from their May release, and I it, had they stayed on their target production data, I think it would have stayed. I think they want, They were really targeting May and trying to get back to Star Wars owning May. Um, I don't think it's going to stay in May. I don't even know if it's going to stay in 2018. I think it's going to 2019. I think that you. I, the report has been that they're probably going to try to avoid that. They're going to try to avoid... They're, they're, we're gonna, I think we're getting two Star Wars movies in 2019. I think that Han Solo will come out in May of 2019, and I think they'll push the final Star Wars movie in, the, in this new trilogy to December of 2019. I think mm -hmm. we'll get, and it's not the way that I wanted my two a year to be uh, proven right, but this is special circumstances. I just can't, there's just too much. And I'm not saying, going back to your original point, they very well, it is very possible they could turn this around and give us a great movie. But to bring on a new director, to bring on all this stuff, to bring on, you know, to figure out new things in these reshoots, because the other thing we didn't talk about, the, fi the final weeks that we have here of the shoots were the planned shoots of the actual production, not the reshoots. The reshoots are going to be something else completely. They're going to sh reshoot a lot of stuff. They're, gonna, they're going to add in new things. To put, add in all these things and then try to fire on to, to hit that May date, that's going to be a task, man. It's going to be a real task. If they're not going to cancel it, if they're not going to pull it back, then why not say, okay, look, let's just bite the bullet on this thing. Let's, let's release it in 2019. Um, people realize that this thing is it's in trouble. We give it a lot of work. We have now a year and a half or, or more to now work on this thing and, and really get it polished. I don't know. Am I crazy? I, I don't think you're crazy. You're, but you're also not doing the Christian Harloff want to bet like <laughs> kind of thing. So... I can oh, yeah. see, I, you know what? I can see both sides of this being like, yeah, I could see it happening. And if more reports come out, which uh, let me check my watch, yeah. uh, we haven't had something drop yet. So if more reports are going to come out that there's like some more uh, info on problems, maybe I could see it happening too, dude. I could see it totally happening that they might have to move it. Um, but I think they're going to really try to get that release date in. You think they're going to try to hit May? I think they're going to try to hit May, but. I wouldn't be surprised. I think the next plan would be December of 2018. There's no room in December. That's the problem. Yeah. There's no room in December right now between uh, Mary Poppins and everything else. Like Disney has. Yeah, the, Mary Poppins. But it's but it's still, but I get it. It's a property. I get it. Why do the Marks dislike Mary Poppins so strongly? No, I I love Mary Poppins. I'm just talking about as far as Priority. brand. No, no, I hear you. Yeah, people save are going to go see it. Just for the Poppins fun. Council. But yeah, all, yeah, for the right. Poppins. But there is other stuff that's coming out too. I forget. You, you'll tell us in a second too, Perry. But I, I think I thought you were. I um, could. Maybe not. But um, <laughs> but we know that there's other no stuff pressure, coming up Perry. there. I just think that it's more likely that they move it. But Ashley, let's first touch on the fact, Bob Iger. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So you you see his comments. We're not shocked that he's going to spin it, but do you think that he's worried? And also, what do you think about the release date? It's interesting because, first of all, very rarely do you see somebody of his caliber just stop for like a paparazzo and give a full interview. I loved that. Mm. Um, they kind of just laugh and they're like, okay, bye. But he stood there and he gave all these statements and then they get to the release date and he's like, can't comment on that one. But what's interesting is in the press release, 
when they were announcing Ron Howard, when they were saying they were getting rid of Lord Miller, they were like, we're staying on that May 2018 release date. Why even put that out there if you're slightly worried about it? Right. Perry? Yeah, that, that video made me a little upset. It's just <laughs> like, I, I know TM, I, I've watched TMZ before. I think it's a very entertaining show. I just feel bad. The poor guy's just trying to get his car washed and he's being attacked by a <laughs> right. camera. But, but again, like you said, that is why he has his job because he didn't go like, no, get the camera out of my face or do anything inappropriate like that. He, he stood there and he said yes or no. And he gave very diplomatic answers, which is what I would expect from somebody in his position. But whether or not that movie is going to leave its date last week, I said no, because I think that would have increased the backlash too much, and I think they were going to try just so damn hard to meet that May date. I'm starting to think it won't happen. And again, one, that Hollywood Reporter article that I was citing earlier, they said that shooting was supposed to wrap in July. Now it's going to go through the first week in September. Mm. That, that really is not a lot of time. So yeah. I just don't think think that they would sacrifice the quality of the movie to rush it to make a release date. However, I did look up the rest of December because I had forgotten what I read last week. First, we first on December 14th, it's the animated Spider-Man movie right. and Mortal Engines. Okay. Next, it's Aquaman. Right. Oh. Then it's Mary Poppins Returns. Right. So, Ooh. I mean, whether or not Disney wants to move Mary Poppins to focus on a Star Wars movie, those are still, it's, it's a dangerous place to play right now unless they've already carved out that spot for themselves. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's tricky. I'm very curious to see how this is all going to pan out. I wonder if they're going to have any information about the release date at D23. I was so certain that D23 was going to be all Han Solo. I was like, we're going to get a trailer, we're going to get some kind of BTS right, footage or something, right. and we're going to get a title. And now I'm like, I don't even know if they're going to mention it at this point. <laughs> That's a, it's a great question. I think they're going to have to. I think they're going to have to mention it. Um, do you think I, they'd bring out Ron Howard, or do you think he'll be... I don't know. It, I think like, do you think they would fly him back? I don't it? know. I mean, it, it's, it would be, it would right be good. He's a little busy. <laughs> a little busy. But it would be good for morale. I mean, it really... It, it would be good for... I mean, I'm talking about the audience morale. It would be yeah. good to hear him kind of... Because he is... He's, regardless of what you think, and I said it last week when they announced him as the director, I don't think that he necessarily would be the right guy. I've changed my opinion a little bit because of the fact if they were just bringing him on for a fresh movie like Ron Howard is going to be the guy that dresses up like ah really Ron Howard he hasn't had the last couple of, yeah he's an Oscar winning director but he really hasn't had anything the last couple of years but this is a different task this is asking someone who is experienced who crew, can can manage crew morale that can that is calm that can get things done in a messy production mm -hmm. and I'm and I changed my tune in the fact that this is the type of guy that you absolutely need to do something like this mm -hmm. because you don't I mean you want him to make a great movie and you want him to understand what the character of Han Solo is and you want him to fix up this mess but there's just so much there's so much this story is not going to go away anytime soon and I'm so curious to what's going to happen I feel like they need to just bring him out and have him say a few words about how it's going and stuff like that and then everyone will just be like I, yeah, I, yeah, I think they should absolutely do that. Fly him in there, have that. Like I said it last week. He's like the calming presence. He's like the father yep. figure. He's coming in to like work with the team, and it's going to be a movie directed. I said it last week in collaboration of each other. Lawrence Kasdan and Kathleen Kennedy are going to work closely with Ron Howard. But wouldn't it be great? He's already on set. It reported on June twenty sixth. Yeah, if they take a few stills. And uh, you know, make it look pretty. Mm -hmm. Bring them on out and go. Here's what it looks like right now, and you get a great shot of Alden Ehrenreich as the yeah. official Han Solo. I think that would do a lot for the fans. I bet you he'll record like a little. Hey oh, guys, yeah. sorry I can't be here, but yeah. I'm here on the that Han Solo work. set. That could work too. I will say this because I've been I've been battling with whether or not I was going to talk about this at all. Um, uh, don't worry, Perry. I'm not going <laughs> to give away too much. But I got a I got an email from 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 somebody. Oh my who's God, got right. a who's got a source. And I'm not so giving, nervous. I know. Don't don't hide, Ashley. Don't worry. I'm not gonna. I, all, all I'm gonna say is that I and and I'm not gonna report on the whole thing because it's a it's a grain of salt thing, and I don't know how true it is. It just they sent me what they say is the plot of Han Solo. Good lord. What I can tell you about this plot that this this one is is that it does add a lot of elements of legends things that you'd heard about Han Solo beforehand. Um, now, the one thing that I'll, that I'll give you in this thing is that apparently Woody Harrelson and Chewie are together before they meet Han Solo, that Woody and Chewie already have a relationship. That's, that's, that's the most that I'll give you. But there's, there's a lot that, the, from the majority of what I've heard in this particular plot line, is that it does focus on 
Han Solo and his beginnings and how he gets involved with smuggling and things of that nature. And, and Lando's involved in this thing as well. And they also mentioned Michael K. Williams. There's there's some cool stuff in here. The, the end seems a little silly, and there's some. hopefully this isn't true because there's spoiler stuff that I wish I wasn't even sent, to be honest. But there's stuff in here. Story-wise, it seems like something that I would want to see. So it from if this particular thing is right, then I would say that they have the idea of what the fans want to see, which is great. It's just, let's hope they lock it down. Mm. Um, all right, now it's time to move on. That's all, everything that happened in the world of movie news. Now it is time for that bit that we call, What's the Deal with Canon? Everything in the world <laughs> of Star Wars that connects to the movies, video games, television shows, comic books, whatever it is, we're going to talk about it. Marcus Rileyus, what, what, what is it? What's first? Well, first... Guess what? What happened? Rebels. Star yeah. Wars Rebels is Heard finally it. getting a Blu-ray release. We got the date, and it is August 29th, and it's coming out. And also, congratulations to Rebels. Thank it just you. won oh. the Saturn Award. Mm -hmm. Yes, it did. For best, yes, uh, did. What, best TV uh, animated series? Uh, I don't you know brought what it categories. up. <laughs> yeah, I brought it up. No, I saw it on Twitter, so uh, there's my memory out the door. So let's get into Rebels. But, um, the, but, you know, everybody knows who's watching this or watching Rebels. One of the best seasons, in my opinion, uh, just happened with season three. So mm -hmm. we're getting, on the Blu-ray, Return to Mandalore. We're getting Thrawn, A Legend Reborn, Apprentices to Outcast, Kenobi, and Maul, which was great. I love that. The original Rebel, Saw Guerrero Returns, and five audio commentaries featuring Dave Filoni, uh, Justin Ridge, uh, Killian Plunkett. There it is. Yeah. Keith Kellogg, uh, all supervising animation. Directors, obviously, Dave Filoni. So... Lots of good special features. Christian, are you going to buy this? Uh, I'm going to get it for sure. I think that one of the things with Star Wars Rebels I, that I'm actually jealous of, because we do do, we have the, the Rebel show that we do, so we get, the, we get to see the, them before they come out weekly, and we watch them weekly. I'm jealous of people that get to binge them, because I think that Rebels is one of those shows that you're going to, that you would benefit a lot more from watching them three, four, five in a row, and then knocking out a full season. And I love the fact, and I said it, I I'm so glad that they're stopping at four, not because I don't love the show. I do. I just think that there's just so many stories you can tell, especially in the timeline that they're in, that this is the third chapter in a in in four in four chapters of this of this particular story that they're telling that Dave Filoni has been crafting. And you should get it. If you're a Star Wars fan in general and you want to get you want to learn more about the lore, this is a show that you should be catching up with. And and from what we saw at Celebration, they're really going at it in season four. They're they're going after it and, and this is gonna be we know we're gonna lose some people. We, we have to, depending on where we are. The same way same thing that they did and the same risk that they took in Rogue One, they're gonna take in Rebel season four. But I know you're a big Rebels fan. I am a big you Rebels excited fan. For this? And I think what you said is true because I binged all of season one and two and then I watched three week to week. And I liked three a lot, but it definitely has a different effect, especially with such a short show when you could stitch it all together. And I think it made me a little more forgiving earlier on with those filler episodes right. because mm -hmm. it just it would breeze right by and I'd be back into the story the next time. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot on this that I want to see. I want to see that Mandalore featurette just because I think that played really well in season three. Right. And I need to know more about that. So that's what I have my eye on. But the featurette that I am most excited about is the one called Thrawn, A Legend Reborn. One, because of Thrawn the book. Mm -hmm. Because, no spoilers here, but if... If you haven't read it, it opens the door up to so many possibilities for this character and possibilities that maybe they could tap into in Rebels. So I'm curious if there are any little teases in there, but also because I wasn't particularly thrilled with what I got from, Th from Thrawn in season three of Rebels. So when I read what I read in the book, I'm like, oh, they could have done so much more with him. And I think one of the little teases is, is what the future may hold for that character. So I'm hoping they, they give me some good teases in what's to come for season four, where I'm thinking, oh, like this was building towards what I wanted. Please give me that. So I am definitely going to buy this and watch the crap out of all the extras. Yeah. Ashley? Um, I do binge this show. I good. do not have cable or anything like that. So I... Uh buy them all on Amazon after the season's over and just binge them through. Um, that Kenobi and Maul scene, I cannot wait to learn. Like, after I watched that, I was, like, Googling the hell out of it, just trying to figure out any more information that Dave Filoni was saying. Also, anytime he talks, I love it. Um, so, yeah, I'm very excited about that feature specifically. Right. What's it like not to have cable? Because I've been having a really bad problem with my cable lately. You know and just what? getting rid of it. The only time it's really... Well, we'll talk about this later. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the Blu-ray, I'm definitely uh, probably going to buy, actually. I loved this season. I actually want to go back. 
changed my tune because I went back and binged one weekend where uh, the lady was off doing something, and I was like, oh, I'm just going to catch up on some Rebels. And the binging is what got me. And maybe it's also seeing it the second time. It was all on my DVR, and I was going through, and I was cleaning it up, and I was like, oh, I have like five episodes of Rebels. So I kind of want to buy this because I want to get the behind-the-scenes stuff. But also, God, that last um, Maul Obi-Wan scene just... I don't know. I got chills when Obi Wan was revealed, and it's like the old Obi Wan. I love that shot of that, Luke, like Luke running through silhouette. It's so good. It's so oh my good. Gosh. The music. When I, noticed, oh, when I figured yeah. out what was happening, I was yeah. Like, yeah. yeah, it was really yeah. good. Chill inducing. Uh, that one got spoiled for me, but it was okay. Well, it's coming out. You guys make sure it comes out in August. So if you want to catch up on Rebels, now's the time to do it. Go get one and two, and then three will be there. And then we'll get season four, and I think it's a good way that they're promoting it. I'm very intrigued to find out exactly what's going to happen, how they're going to wrap it up, leading into the events of Rogue One and New Hope, obviously. All right, uh, Mark, what's next? All right, this is something that I am so excited. A new trailer for The Forces of Destiny came out. And man, are we close to this thing. It's July 3rd. It is premiering on YouTube and July 9th on, Di on the, the Disney Channel. So Forces of Destiny is going to focus on Rey. It's going to focus on Leia, Hera. Uh, who else have we got? Um, uh, Ahsoka. Ahsoka. Yeah. Just so many of the strong female characters are in the Star Wars universe. And the little side adventures, one of my favorites is Leia and Wicket. Like oh, yeah, they, during they did that, a, the in-between from how they got to the yep. uh, village, yeah. That kind of stuff I love. I love the filling in the blanks, and I loved seeing, um, please, uh, Mandalore, she's on Rebels. Sabine. Sabine, Sabine yeah. and Leia together. And she's like, oh, what do mm -hmm. I call you? Prince of Persia? Oh, Leia. <laughs> and it, it's just really cool to see those little side adventures that are happening, something that happens behind the scenes. I think this is really great to keep the Star Wars fans happy while we're waiting uh, for The Last Jedi and also get the, the, the Han Solo stuff out of your mind. It just... Focus on some fun stuff, and I love the animation as well. So check out that that trailer. What do you think? The animation remind me a little bit of those Tartakovsky uh, Clone just gonna, Wars yep, episodes yep. that before the Clone Wars that we all know now. There was the ones that came that had come out um, in was it two thousand uh, five? I think around that time, right yeah. around Sith. When yeah. So it reminded me of that. It also there, there's some really cool images, and um, I think that the image of, of Anakin Skywalker and Yoda by the Force Tree really cool. I thought that was interesting. Interesting. The tie-ins to everything is what I want to see, and how they're going to play it together, and how, like you mentioned, with um, Satine or Sabine and um, and Leia, that was really cool to watch. What's happening with Soka? It looks like Yoda's handing her something. There's there's more to be told with these little. These, just these little images and these little stories that are going to tell, this is the way you piece things together. And by the way, so Jennifer Murrow, who's one of the writers on Forces of Destiny, she's actually going to be here next week, mm -hmm. as well as Janina Gavankar from Battlefront. We're going to have both those ladies on nice. next week. Very excited to talk about them, all things Star Wars. But Ashley, you know, you, you see this trailer, you hear about Forces of Destiny. Yeah. Excited? Yeah, I mean, initially, not going to lie, I didn't care. I was okay. like, this is for kids. It's a little animated thing. It's going to be great. But then the trailer comes out, and you're like, this is going to fill in some stuff. There's actually going to be a little bit of significance to each of these stories. So, heck yeah, I'm excited about it. Also, don't read the YouTube comments on them. They're really mean. Oh, oh really? Oh, my oh, God. No. It's a vile place. Well, yeah, it's scum <laughs> and villainy on there on yeah. those YouTube uh, comments sometimes. That's a, uh, that's a good reference. Yeah, yeah. Perry? <laughs> that makes me sad. But this trailer makes me really happy. One of the most exciting things about this trailer to me is the fact that I'm going to be able to share this with my little cousin, and mm. she is really getting into Star Wars, and this just feels like the perfect thing to show her. She just watched all three, uh, Eps 4, 5, and 6, so to see some of this fill in the blank, I can't wait to like watch it, and you know, I mean, not to, to belittle how like smart kids are and whatnot, but... When we talk about Star Wars, she just says things to me. I'm like, wow, like you yeah. processed all that. So I just can't wait to like really to get into it about how these stories fit together. Love the animation. And I think this is just an especially well-cut trailer too. You just feel like that rousing build where when it gets to that line from Maz at the end, you're like, rah, right. rah, ladies. I just got so excited. And I mean, really, we're always talking about, you know, putting more ladies in the forefront. And this seems like such a perfect organic, appropriate way to do it where mm -hmm. you know I, I i don't like hearing that there's a lot of negativity in the comments but th this is how you do it and how you do it right these are characters that should be celebrated and i think this is a great way to do that all right so our next story actually there's a video game that's coming out here um the visceral video game riley what's the information on that one uh yeah are you talking about the uh 
The visceral, the, yeah. The visceral. Oh, got it. Uh, well, let me jump ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's some mind. new info on the actual game that just came out, and I think there's, there's some rumors and things that happen. We've been talking about <laughs> this thing. It. Yeah, it looks really good. But they've been talking about this thing for a long time. We're starting to, they're starting to get a bit more. I thought there was going to be some information about it at E3 that didn't happen, but I think we're getting closer and closer and closer. Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, so there there is some spoilers they're, they're marking here. Throw it um, up, Cody. There you yeah, go. throw up the spoiler alert just in case. But it looks like that the game is going to be set between A New Hope and The Empire Strikes Back, but airs closer to the events of the latter. Our hero is a smuggler known by the alias of Dodger. I like that. Mm -hmm. Dodger. Like Dodger and uh, Oliver. Got mm -hmm. it. Uh, and the, the story is a little bit, it's, you know, it's about him, um, you know, working for, like, underground things. Mm -hmm. And he's from the planet of Alderaan, which I dig, mm -hmm. okay? Well, that's what this report is saying, that there is actually a kill list by the Emperor, by the Empire, to go after the last remaining survivors of Alderaan. They want to wipe this place off the map. So I like that little spin of the story. Um, and if it's a, an, a, a video game where you can play this and go on missions, and is it like, I don't know, is it like Uncharted? Is I think it, it's going to be, yeah. Yeah, so that gets me really, really excited. Uh, Christian, are you going to buy this video game? 100%. I mean, yep. I, look, before... The Battlefront 2 storyline, story mode was was announced. I was like, okay, we still haven't gotten anything that tells me any stories about the Star Wars universe that kind of furthers canon like they promised when they said all the stuff, the books, the comics, the video games, and then we hadn't gotten anything. Fast forward to we are getting that with Battlefront 2, but now we're going to get it with this game. I love the idea of it. I love the fact that it's it's going to be a, an un, uncharted game for the Star Wars universe. I think that's great. Um, sure, you want to make them from Alderaan? Let's do it. Let's figure out how to make it work together. And I think this goes back to, I don't know where the hell we were talking about, but we were saying that maybe it's as we're, they're focusing on whether it's Han Solo or even if they do an Obi-Wan movie or the events of the Death Star, everything's familiar, right? This is a familiar time period, but with new characters. Mm -hmm. So they're able to explore what people have been maybe asking for, but in video game form, and kind of testing the waters there. I think there's it's interesting to say, here's some brand new characters, because maybe... This is the kind of thing I think so excited about, whether it's comic books or video games or, or, or um, you know, co comics, video games, video games, anything that they have there. I think that to be able to find a new character and as you're watching and playing along that you hope that this character could eventually make it into a film, I think is exciting. Do you care? Oh, I care. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I care. Isn't mm -hmm. that from Star Wars? Mm -hmm. Right, everybody? You with me? Good. Yeah. yeah, I care very much. I like the idea of introducing a new story into canon. And again, I said it with Forces of Destiny, I like little side stories that kind of fill sure. in a lot of the blanks. So are we gonna run across some uh, neat characters from that, we're, that we know and love? Probably, maybe. Um, I like inhabiting a new character. I think the story element they're going for is very fascinating because in Star Wars canon, Alderaan, last, all we hung out with was Leia. That was it, you know? Right. So we didn't really get to meet anybody else. I know there might be some side things happening, and I know Bloodline kind of mentions, goes goes in a lot into Princess Leia or General Leia's psyche on what happened. But this sounds very, very interesting. I love video games like Uncharted, and that you can kind of get in immersed in this game. Doing it in the Star Wars universe is a win-win. Hurry. -win. I am so excited for this because I love this story, but you guys know I'm a little intimidated by games and I'm trying to get really good at Battlefront before Battlefront 2 comes out. So I have a feeling I'm gonna get this game and I'm gonna suck at it, but it <laughs> makes me think that I want this I want this story in, in a book form or, or a movie. It's like, why isn't this a standalone movie? Like what a cool way to be able to explore a new character and new details without having like the ball and chain that is making sure this character lives up to these sky high expectations. In introduce someone new and then use this opportunity to fill in little loose ends because that is a big thing with the Empire here. It's just like little story bits that they include is like this guy is someone who ditched the draft to become a stormtrooper. I mean, that mm -hmm. just goes to, you know, how do people, how are people forced into becoming stormtroopers? That's a great thing to explore. And the thing with Alderaan too, because as we see it in the movie, it is pretty much minus Leia, poof, and Alderaan's gone. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different perspective, whether it's maybe somebody who's working on the Death Star and watches their home planet explode or right. or something like this, where, where he winds up building a grudge and blames the Rebel Alliance for sparking that to happen. So mm -hmm. he's not even blaming the Empire. There's just so many little details here. And I think that 
not to bring it back to the standalone movie thing again, because I think the game has a, very much a right to exist on its own, and these types of great stories should be told in that medium also, but... I mean, this to me is just a perfect example of how you make a standalone movie that feels like a standalone movie, but also like something that's part of the Star Wars film franchise overall. Ashley? I am beyond pumped for this game. I had actually forgotten about it because they, they did the whole panel where they talked about it at Star Wars Celebration London. And then we haven't really heard anything yeah. since. So I was yeah. like, I had forgotten about it. But the kill list thing is such a clever way from a gaming standpoint mm -hmm. to not be able to be spotted by the Empire without them going after you. I love that. And... Amy Hennig, who did Uncharted, is behind this yep. game. So anything she wants to do, perfectly fine with me. All right, so now that's everything in the games. There are some comic books that are coming out this weekend that you guys should be checking out. Dr. Afra number eight, that hits stands. And you have, I think, the they're, they're concluding this uh, the Citadel storyline here with, with herself and Luke Skywalker, obviously. So make sure you go and check out that if you've been following the Dr. Afra story. And also Darth Maul number four also hit. That is it. If you want to figure out um, what the hell's been going on with Darth Maul and, and before he and Obi-Wan go out into the deserts of Tatooine, go ahead and check that out. That also has hit stands. Now we are going to talk to you guys. You guys have sent in some tweets, hashtagging Collider Jedi Council. We've gone through some of them and we're going to talk about them. Riley, what do we got? All right. First up, we have Ryan Roach, who says Collider Jedi Council does Star Wars need its own Kevin Feige like Marvel has amid Han Solo news, Dave Filoni question mark. I think Kathleen Kennedy is there, Kevin Feige. Yep. I mean that's 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 the thing is that people don't. I mean she runs Lucasfilm, but Lucasfilm doesn't really make more movies than Star Wars. They'll be doing Han Solo. I mean uh, Indiana Jones eventually, but mm -hmm. they're it's not like someone that's the head of a studio who's running all these different things. The head of the studio is Bob Iger. That's Disney. Lucasfilm. She's in the same way that. Kevin Feige is in charge of Marvel Studios. She is in charge of Lucasfilm. So she is. Now, whether or not you like what she's doing, that's another conversation altogether. Um, I do. I think that she's making the right decisions right now, and I think that she's proven so far with the two movies. I like The Force Awakens, and I'm not going to Avatar and uh, Titanic to where it became popular and then people don't like it all of a sudden. I like The Force Awakens. I can watch it again and again, and I like it better than Rogue One. Um, and I think that Rogue One... However, I think that the last half of that movie is a fantastic bit of Star Wars storytelling. I still have problems with the characterizations and things that they did in that movie. But there's two movies that did very well in the box office, did further the lore of Star Wars, and I think she's doing a good job. We're going to see how this Han Solo thing pans out. I think that she's going to buy herself some time because I think The Last Jedi is going to be a smashing success both critically and financially. Mm -hmm. um, so she is the Kevin Feige. She is the one who's been doing this stuff. But... I love the Dave Filoni suggestion. Uh, Dave Filoni is one of my favorite Star Wars personalities of all time. I've had the chance to talk to him, um, not just interviewing, but randomly the first night at Star Wars Celebration, we're all out to eat, and he was there, and, and uh, myself, and I forget, I was with David Griffin, and we said we just had a conversation, and he will talk to you guys about Star Wars. He's just, he's, he knows the world. He knows the universe. I, yeah, he's the best. The encyclopedia of Star Wars. It's he crazy. Um, and I think that he is going to get a standalone film. I think that he's going to wind up doing I wouldn't be surprised. I think they're going to announce John Favreau as the director of Obi-Wan. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that uh, I think that that Filoni would be great. But I think that Favreau will be the one who's going to wind up doing Obi-Wan. Mm. I feel like we made a bet about that a while ago. You better stop betting with me. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Well, it's like hit it's or dangerous. miss. Yeah. I feel like we're even right now. No. Um, False. Um, <laughs> well, well, all right. We'll yeah. table this for later, False. too. Yeah. Um, but no, I have nothing to add to this. I agree with you, because when this question came up, I'm like, oh, like Kathleen Kennedy. And I think she is doing a good yeah. job, and I trust her, and I'm yeah. curious to see how she handles everything, because it's a, a mighty big job she's got there. Yeah, I mean, we have no reason to believe that she can't isn't capable of it. And right. Marvel's changed directors, too. There was the whole Peyton Reed, Edgar Wright thing. I mean, right. It wasn't as late in the game, but let's right. wait and see. Yeah. Uh, remember when the conversation was that she was the, the Kevin Feige? Right. And then the Han Solo thing happened, and people turned pretty quick on her. They love and, you in this town when they love you, and they hate yeah, you when they hate you. I thought it was pretty unfair, and especially when you're connecting the dots, is Kathleen Kennedy probably had to make the toughest decision in her entire career. And I don't think a lot of people are giving her credit for, is that she had to actually stop the boat midstream and and actually change course 180 right. that is a hard thing to do and from all the reports that are coming out i'm not even blaming lord and miller it was just the two didn't work together right. she had the foresight enough to go you know what i'm going to save this that's what you need 
right. that is exactly what you need. Well, what's next? All right, we got Chris Sutherland who says, thoughts on Russo Brothers directing episode 10. Episode 10? Episode 10, I'm not going to... Uh, that that won't happen because I don't think they're going to do episode 10 for a very long time. Right, um, right. But Russo Brothers doing a Star Wars film, I think, will happen. Mm. Not... It will happen. Yeah. Um, they Ooh. were they were in studio, and I got a chance to talk to them. They these guys are Star Wars fans, like fanatics. They love mm. Star Wars, and I'm I'm still I'm I'm championing hard to try to get them on this show because like they are uh, they are Star Wars because I would and after are you kidding me after both you know my well one of my favorite movies if not my favorite MCU movie is Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier and then yeah. followed that up with Civil War. They made some really fun movies, and they know that world very well. Like, you talk to them about comic books. They know it. They've studied it. They pay attention to it. And I think the same would be the case for Star Wars. I think they'd be fantastic choices. They're tied up right now with mm -hmm. the Avengers and everything, too. So it, and even I don't think Episode Ten is happening anytime soon. I think it's going to be standalones for a while. But, yeah, if you can lock down the Russo brothers, you get them, and you get them fast. Ashley? Yeah, I would. I mean, I would love that. I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, but... I agree with you. I think it will. Yeah. Totally. I wouldn't mind seeing it happen. I really like what they've done so far in the MCU, and that kind of bodes well for their ability in another pig franchise. But, yeah, I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon. And the only thing that would cross my mind that would make me think maybe they'll say no to an opportunity like this is that they've been so buried in the MCU. I mean, I don't know what their, what their hopes and dreams are if they have this dream of making a tiny indie out there or something. But, you know, it's a lot of work to to uh, direct a big blockbuster like this. And, you know, at the end of uh, Avengers, they'll have done four. So that's a lot. Mark? Yeah, I'd love it. I mean, like all you guys said, they knocked it out of the park with uh, Winter Soldier and even more so with Civil War. Um, I can't pick between the two, to be honest with you, on what I like better. They're just, it's just so great to know that they're leading the Avengers. I would love to see them do a Star Wars movie. If they're fanatics, then you know we would get a kick-ass Star Wars movie from those guys. All right, what's next? All right, Paul Lennon asks, could Ray be the one who destroyed Luke's temple? Ben Heidzer takes blame. Luke and Han are fooled. Um, I, it's interesting. I mean, I think that Luke's powerful enough that he'd probably sense her when she shows up. That you know, he probably would. Pro she's not like trying to hide. The f I mean, yeah. there's still that thing that I'm would be okay with. You go to the Knights of the Old Republic storyline of how Revan can, comes to be. That when you find him, he's just just kind of clueless drifter and they're like well then you find out exactly who he is and the Jedi kind of hid that he was in course Darth Revan maybe they're doing that type of thing with Rey and I wouldn't be opposed to it I don't think that's the case though I don't think she destroyed the temple I think that that was um, Kylo and the rest yeah I mean well you're kind of then kind of going back a bit you're uh, she, wouldn't she remember these things maybe I mean, you do mind wipe I, uh, I yeah I guess but then they, that's getting a little kind of out there. I, I, yeah. I like where we're going, at least with Ray's character, of just the mystery of not knowing where her parents are. And maybe she was a, a young Padawan. You know, I can maybe picture her being a little on the younger side, part of that Jedi crew with the Jedi Temple. But destroying it, I don't buy it. Ashley? Yeah, I, I think it was Kylo, but um, I mean, who am I to say your theory's wrong? I don't know, but yeah, uh, I do yeah, think they, could hit be right. Ray, they hit Ray for a reason. I don't know what that is. I don't think it's that reason. But. What do you think it is, if you had, if you had a guess? I think, I mean, I go back and forth, but I think there's something with Kylo going to the dark side and them hiding Rey for some reason. Is she related? I don't know about that. Right. But I feel like they were trying to protect her from all of that that was happening. The only reason why it, Kylo was not in the dark side at that point, because I think a lot of people think that, but if they stay true to canon and they stay true, uh, Bloodline is six years before, because Kylo is 29 years old. So... Kylo was at 23 years old was still on the good side and he he was still with Luke off on on things so we don't necessarily I, people had been speculating you're not the only one that that Kylo was the one who indeed hit her he might be really young when he did because she was what she's like 10 years old there and I mean so he's he's significant he's like 10 years older than her so I don't know how it's gonna pan out but Perry what do you think I lean towards a no. I don't think it makes all that much sense. And when you bring in the mind wipe things, because that's the first thing that crossed my mind when I thought about how this sure. could possibly work. You also don't want to be in a situation where, I know when you have a film series that one film, like a sequel, should always add to the first film. So when you go back and you rewatch it, you rewatch it with new insight. However, a mind wipe type, type situation would almost negate a lot of what happened and make it not feel as valuable anymore. So yeah. I don't know. I kind of hope this isn't the case. Yeah. 
All right, let's go to the last one. Let's go to uh, Nathan. Okay, Nathan Jacoby writes, Hey, guys, settle a debate for, for me. Do you think that Padme simply lost the will to live, or did Palpatine kill her? Well, the, this comes from there's this theory that was out there for a while, right. and it was a, it's a great theory. Mm -hmm. But no, George Lucas wrote that she lost the will to live. Is it terrible? Yeah, it's awful. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's silly. Um, yeah. He just, just gave up, and it's one of the worst deaths of all time. <gasps> It, it, it was terrible, but uh, <laughs> but I love the theory. I love I, that. Theory. I would love the idea that they if if they decide to kind of go with it and retcon it that it was actually Palpatine that did it. If there's some kind of detective work that they find that out, I'm not going to hate it. But this it, is kind of why I like fan fiction type stuff right? and why I like the Star Wars community because we have this like really freaking stupid plot point that completely ruins a character, and then we have all these super creative people out here that come up with with a lot smarter options that maybe they're not part of the film, but at least it's fun to think about. Yeah, there are so many just like baller prequel theories that <laughs> make it <laughs> baller, so right? baller like it. that make it so much better because Padme was so strong. Why would she die of like a broken heart? It makes no sense. But yeah. I do love that theory. Yeah. I yeah. She died. She died <laughs> of a broken heart, I guess. She lost the world to live, so I guess. That's it, right? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah. Really I, 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 I would love all these series, too. And you you all say there are a lot of creative uh, ways to do this. Um, and I like that theory that came out. But, yeah, this goes along with, yeah, and Leia has memories of her mother when she was talking to Luke in Jedi. Mm, really? Well, they set that up in the comic book with Did Leia. They? Yeah, in the comic Ooh, book in Leia, she started to get images of, of which I loved, by the way. It was the one thing, the, the, that limited series of Leia that they did, which the, the overall oh, series yeah, wasn't yeah. very good. Mm -hmm. But um, but that that moment, she goes to Naboo and she see she starts to see imagery. And Wait she a minute, sees, I saw that she's, the glass. Yes, uh, and they see yeah. imagery of her as sad and everything too. So it actually explains how does she know about her mother when she's talking to me. She has these images of her Great. that she's always no. It, it actually explained it. I liked it. I mean. You know, to the mass audience, they're going to be like, "Ah, that didn't really get explained well." But it did. There are things that are that you can find in those those comics and books that actually do try to fill the holes. Mm -hmm. um, all right, that's it. That's our show. I'd like to thank everybody on the council today. Grand Moff, where can I find you? I am on Twitter and Instagram at pnemroff, and don't forget, clatter behind the scenes and bloopers Saturday, two p.m. Watch it. Ash Crossan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank Where can you. they find you? Oh my gosh, you can tweet me at Ash Crossan, or you can see me on Entertainment Tonight's YouTube page. I'm on there quite a bit. Mr. Mark Yodi Riley, where can they find you? Well, on July 7th, everybody mark your calendars. I'm uh, defending the belt against a couple guys you may know John Roca, the outlaw, and Dan Merle, two of the best competitors in Schmodown history. history. That's I'll true. say it. Yeah. I, I'm going to put myself in there. Why not? Three of so. us, Mount three Rushmore. top competitors. And I can't wait. So check that out, guys. And uh, everywhere else, at Riley Around on Twitter and Instagram and the Schmoes No Main Show. We are live at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays now. See you then. And for me, you can find me at Christian Harloff, both Twitter and Instagram. Like Mark said, make sure that you check out the Schmodown between Mark Riley and Dan Merle and John Roca on July 7th. It goes down as the Collider Collision. Four big matches. Go ahead and check that out. And also on July 4th, when you're done with your hot dogs and your potato salad and all that stuff, turn on the team championship. You have top 10 trying to get those belts back against those stinking Patriots. So there you go, guys. Enjoy. Thank you for everybody. Enjoy your holiday. We'll see you next week. May the force be with you. Always. Hey, guys, mm. if you like this video, click the thumbs up button. Also, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. It'll help you stay up to date with everything we've got going on here at Collider.